Hello and thanks for joining me on this presentation on the relationship of Riemannian geometry and condensed matter physics. Now this is joint work done in collaboration with Claudio Chamon at Boston University. Now as you may recall, a great deal of the research done in the field of condensed matter physics for the past 20 years or so has actually been dealing with the relationship of topology and condensed matter physics. And the major milestones in this development were, for example, in the 1980s, the discovery of the integer and the fractional quantum Hall effect, and in the 2000s, the discovery of the topological insulators. Now, this notion of topology is usually illustrated by a donut being equal to a coffee cup. This is understood in the sense that, in principle, you can take the donut and you can continuously deform it into a coffee cup without changing the number of holes in it. But in fact, if you think about it, then a donut is not equal to a coffee cup. So, for example, you cannot drink coffee out of a donut. And the difference is, in fact, in that geometry. So, what I'm trying to argue in this talk is that there may not only be a close relationship between topology and condensed matter physics, but also between geometry and condensed matter physics. And there has already been some past research in this field. For example, in 2008, Sanardi and Castelnovo used the metric tensor to detect the topological phase transition. At, at zero temperature. And in 2011, Duncan Haldane proposed a geometric view of looking at the fractional quantum Hall effect. So here are the fundamental questions that I'm trying to address in this talk. First, can we use geometric techniques to detect topological phase transitions both at zero as well as at finite temperature? And second, can we use these techniques to better understand the renormalization group process and phase transitions in general? So here's a brief outline of my talk. I'm first of all giving a review of Riemannian geometry. Then I'm diving right into the physics. I will explain to you how Riemannian geometry can be used to detect topological phase transitions first at zero temperature. This is done work by this is the work by Sanardi and Castelnovo. And then I'm suggesting a way of generalizing this work to finite temperatures. Then in the last part of the talk, I will explain to you how Riemannian geometry can be linked to the renormalization group process. So first of all, I want to give a short review of Riemannian geometry for you. So if you go on Wikipedia or on Google and you search for the notion of a Riemannian manifold, what you find is the following definition. It says that a Riemannian manifold is a pair MG where M is a real smooth manifold and it is equipped with some scalar products which is usually denoted by GP, G of P, and this inner product is defined on each tangent plane of the manifold. And it also needs to vary smoothly from point to point. Now, this definition is rather abstract, and I'm, now I'm trying to explain to you what it in fact means intuitively. So, we realize that this definition consists, in first, first of all, of two parts. The first part says that N needs to be a real smooth manifold. This means that it should locally look like Euclidean space. So, for example, if you consider the surface of the Earth, a sphere, so to say, then globally it's a curved surface. But if you zoom in locally, it actually looks flat and like Euclidean space. So a sphere is an example of a Riemannian manifold. 
The second part of the definition says that on each tangent plane of the manifold, there needs to be a scalar product defined. And the scalar product needs to vary smoothly from point to point. Intuitively speaking, this means that on a Riemannian manifold, the units of length and angles may change as you move from point to point. As a consequence, for example, if you want to determine the, what is the shortest path between two points on the manifold, it may in fact no longer be a, sh a straight line, but it may be something like a curved path, something which, which mathematicians call a geodesic. So here I am giving you two examples of Riemannian manifolds. On the left hand side we have the sphere. This is said to be a Riemannian manifold of positive scalar curvature. This means that if you take a triangle and draw it on a sphere, it actually looks fatter in the sense that the sum of the interior angles is always greater than 180 degrees. And on the right hand side we have a hyperbolic surface. This is said to be of negative scalar curvature. This means in turn that if you draw a triangle on this surface, it in fact looks skinnier in the sense that the sum of the interior angles is less than 180 degrees. And this means that the scalar curvature is in fact a negative quantity. 